there's a lot of business which can be done these days over the phone or by the click of a mouse. But some deals need something more personal. And when the business people from the financial heart of London have to travel, they have an airport virtually on their doorstep. London City Airport's runway was built in the 1980s on disused docks, just a stone's throw from the offices of international banks, insurers and stockbrokers. Its short runway and relatively steep glide path means airlines have to use special short takeoff and landing planes. And there's a lot of private traffic, both jets and turboprops, usually carrying six to ten people. There are more than three quarters of a million private flights in Europe per year. That's about 8% of all air traffic. Business aviation is on the up, and more so than commercial traffic. Even in the midst of worldwide financial turmoil, the City of London is still driving a demand for more privacy, security and time-saving in the air. A new breed of aircraft is spreading its wings, providing a growing alternative to commercial airline flights. Very light jets are establishing markets worldwide, from the United States and Asia to Europe. This is a Cessna Mustang, based at London's Stansted Airport. It might look like a classic Learjet, but it's much smaller and cheaper, and that brings private plane rental within the reach of many more people. Unlike most scheduled flights, private planes can often reach a city's secondary airport, straight away putting the passenger closer to the final destination. And steering clear of more congested hubs, companies can plan shorter trips abroad for their executives at a cost, so the operators say, which is comparable to a business class airline ticket. From the leisure side, we get a lot of people who are going down in the summer to the south of France or in winter they're going skiing. Um, on the business side throughout the year, it will be financial institutions as you would expect, the City of London particularly in our case, but it's also companies that have a lot of clients or suppliers on the continent, so they need to travel abroad to actually see their suppliers or indeed to see their key customers. The emergence of very light jets is having a major impact on the business aviation market. Firstly, um, where people are normally flying around in larger jets, they can actually do the same flight in a smaller jet, typically at half the cost. So, for example, um, a day return to Paris on a jet like this is 3,200, and it's just under 6,000 pounds on a mid-sized jet. But there's also the category of people who currently fly in scheduled business or first class, or even, even the easy jet route, and what they're trying to do is to save the time that they spend at airports at both ends and it shortens their journey. They can do in a day what would typically take two days and they can do that at a fastly reduced cost. And for those at the controls, very light jets have a number of advantages over turboprop aircraft for journeys in Europe. The main difference uh, is obviously the, the time saving that we have with the jet uh, compared to the turboprop. It is a lot quicker, uh, even though it's short distances that we actually do. And um, it's a brand new plane, the reliability is great, and the passenger just loves it. So, stands the tower, Lonnie Swan, and the start. Via the, uh, Forecasters say the attractiveness of very light jets will soon double the number of business aircraft flying to around 3,500 by the year 2017. Somehow, they'll have to find room in already crowded airspace. So at its simulation center in Budapest, the European Organization for Safety in the Air, Eurocontrol, is trying to predict what the skies will look like. We started this initiative because the number of very light jets coming into Europe over the next few years is going to be large. It is significant because they will now fly at the same levels as normal commercial aircraft, but at much slower speeds. So there is a problem to make sure that we can integrate the faster jets and these slower jets together. It means controllers have to be trained to deal with a new type of air traffic management. 
it will be a challenge for the controllers to handle the very light jets in the terminal area and in the end route area. Our aim now to uh, test and assess the impact on controllers' workload within these two weeks with various controllers from different countries, from end route and terminal areas. The task of the controller in the sector to sequence aircraft for arrival, and the arrival flow uh, consists of bet between uh, the uh, commercial and VLG aircraft, so the speed difference can come uh, out from this exercise significantly, and they have to deal the separation issues within uh, the range of uh, available tools and applications. In addition to the VLJs, we have unmanned airborne vehicles which will fly at the same sorts of speeds which have to be accommodated and there are other heavier aircraft which will fly at those most slower speeds. And we are looking at both those uh, problems to make sure that we can try and integrate those sorts of activities with normal aircraft and to do it safely. Unmanned aerial vehicles form another face of light air traffic. As well as military drones used in conflict zones, there's a growing generation of civilian aircraft for surveillance and security missions, and they come in various shapes and sizes. This powered paraglider is built in Strasbourg, on the border between France and Germany. It's designed for long-range surveillance to automatically monitor road traffic or the environment. But this flying robot can also carry a payload, allowing it, for instance, to transport cargo to areas without the infrastructure to support normal aircraft. It's cheap, and with its parafoil, it can be sent to areas which would be otherwise impossible to reach. With this method, this technology of using a flexible wing, you can transport a big load at low cost and a small amount of space used. So you can take off in just 50 to 80 meters. If you can carry a 250 kilo payload in one cubic meter from point A to point B, why not use it to open up zones? Areas isolated maybe by flooding or earthquake or guerrilla war. The drone follows precise GPS positions pre-programmed into a ground station, but the operator can equally switch the autopilot off at any time and fly it just like any remote controlled aircraft. We're developing a one-ton payload with really low fuel consumption. At the moment it's 12 litres per hour, but it will be 35 litres per hour. That's still a great advantage in those countries to transport a ton of air freight. We got together with Aviation Sans Frontier and worked for nearly a year on a pilot project in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Even though it's being flown by computer, they put a pilot on board during the tests, just in case. But there's little to do except sit back and enjoy the ride.